Okay, so with this video, we're going to be doing a bit of catch up. Um, I'm going to be going over four movies and one TV show season that, is, that have come out in the last four months that I would have liked to have made video, like individual videos for them, but I just don't see myself making the time to. So I'm going to do kind of short, just summarized reviews of what I thought of them and put them all together in this video. There's stuff that I still want to talk about, but I don't want to ded dedicate as much time as I do to some other things that have come out. But just to go over the movies, we'll go ahead and start with Tenet. Tenet, of course, is written and directed by Christopher Nolan. It's his newest blockbuster and probably one of the only blockbusters that have come out this year after in actual theaters after March 2020. It's a mind-bending kind of psychological action movie about secret agents becoming a part of this program that has figured out how to basically rewind time and it, there's a lot of really interesting effects that I think no one was just really excited to do in a movie with having time played forwards and backwards at the same time and that aspect of the movie the technical effects of it it's very fun it's very interesting there's a lot of really cool eye candy. The opening sequence especially is shot and directed really well where it's really tense. There's some really, really cool sequences throughout this movie that are a lot of fun to watch. But of course the main character is played by John David Washington and he's part of a plot to stop Kenneth Branagh's character who is basically going to destroy the world by finding a MacGuffin, more or less, <laughs> that has to do with time and it would destroy the world. But like I said, the movie is entertaining in its action, but it is considerably lacking in its characterization of the characters, which is a problem I had with Dunkirk too, and not so much in this one, but uh, the most of the characters are pretty one note. The actors are all good in this movie. Uh, Elizabeth Debicki and Robert Pattinson are also in this. They do fine in their roles. They're good in it. They're all entertaining. John David Washington, Kenneth Branagh are both good in their roles as the antagonist protagonist and everything. But because of the lack of characterization, there doesn't feel like there's really any like huge things at stake, at least emotionally, watching the movie. Uh, you know what's going on, you know the consequences of what's going to happen, but you don't, I think, care as much as uh, Nolan wants you to, at least in my own opinion. I think I think that overall it's a solid movie, but by the end of the day it's really just a lot of Nolan having fun making movies, which I think is awesome. I'd rather have the directors have fun making what they're making, but I do think that it's one of his more forgettable movies. I don't think it's necessarily I don't think it's bad by any means. I think it's a good, solid action movie. But I don't think it touches some of his more iconic movies. But I am going to be rating Tenet an 8.0 out of 10. Because it accomplishes what it's supposed to. It's a fun action movie. And that part of it is interesting. But it's not as compelling as it could have been. Next is The Trial of the Chicago 7. Trial of the Chicago 7 is written and directed by Aaron Sorkin, who is one of my favorite writers working today. And much like his other movies, it's very witty, snappy dialogue and everything. The actors are all entertaining in their roles, but it is 
weirdly, one of his more forgettable movies he's made. But the movie's about the Chicago Seven, who are a bunch of anti-Vietnam War protesters who end up get, getting arrested back in the 1968 Democratic Convention in Chicago and go on trial, famously. And, of course, Sorkin's good at courtroom dramas. Uh, it is compelling in that aspect. I think as far as the cast goes, the standouts are probably Yaya, Yaya Abdul-Mateen and Sasha Baron Cohen. Uh, I would have liked to have seen a lot more of Yaya in this, because he was probably the best part of the movie as far as the characters go. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen was good, uh, and all the other actors were good. They ju it just, like I said, by the end of the day, this movie isn't as memorable as I think it sh should be. And I think that kind of has to do with Sorkin's direction. His direction's pretty straightforward and kind of, I don't want to say necessarily bland stylistically, but you can tell a lot more focus is definitely on the writing direction, which I don't blame him, but I think he did a better job with Molly's game as far as a director. Uh, but I think this is a solid movie. I think it's worth a watch just because it's timely, but it also is under that uh, thing that Sorkin does where all his characters are, of course, brilliant speakers and <laughs> and are almost unflappable and everybody else is an idiot and and it's entertaining to an extent but sometimes it doesn't just, it doesn't come across as believable but i think it's definitely it's definitely worth checking out it's uh, definitely a solid movie but i'm going to be rating trial of the chicago 7 a 7.5 out of 10. Next up we have The Devil All the Time, which is directed by Antonio Campos and is based on the novel of the same name by Daniel Ray Pollock. It stars Tom Holland as Arvin Eugene Russell, who is the son of a World War II vet, and the movie takes place from the 40s throughout the 60s, basically from before Arvin's birth, following his father, up to when he's an adult, a young adult. But I really, really, I really enjoyed the story in this movie. I liked the way it played out. It definitely kind of feels like a book in its length and its pacing and the way it plays out and its structure. Um, but I think that is to an, its advantage in a way. I think that it does hinder its pacing some, but I do think that this is a good solid movie that I would rate a little bit higher if the pacing was a little bit better, but for the most part I think it's well directed. I think it's well acted. Uh, Robert Pattinson and Bill Skarsgård are also stands out, stand, standouts in this. Uh, Robert Pattinson plays a preacher who's not a very good person to say the least. None of the people in this movie really are, but um, he has a very like over-the-top accent that I've seen a lot of people criticize him for. However, I do think that it works for his character. Uh, there are people who speak differently in the South, and there are people who have that ridiculous accent sometimes, and it seems like a lot of people, and when they criticize that, uh, have like one accent in mind, and that's just not always how accents work. But it has a phenomenal cast. It's uh, probably one of the best casts of the year. I think that uh, as far as the story goes, it, has a fairly satisfying kind of full circle feel. It does have some similarities to, in the way it feels and plays out, to uh, A Place Beyond the Pines. 
is what it reminded me a lot of because it is a generational story and it kind of has to do with revenge and it's violence and all this other stuff but I think it's a very entertaining movie I think it's worth checking out and I will be rating The Devil All the Time an 8.0 out of 10. And then the last movie I have to go over is Bill and Ted Face the Music. Now, Bill and Ted Face the Music, of course, is the return of Alex Winters and Keanu Reeves as Bill and Ted, respectively, uh, nearly 30 years after their last movie, which is Bogus Journey. And overall, this is just a fun movie. It does do a lot of kind of retreading but in an interesting way where it actually uses Bill and Ted's daughters to kind of retread what they've done before while Bill and Ted go on their own adventure. It's kind of hard to criticize this movie because you can tell that they're, they're having a lot of fun making this and that this is just kind of a passion project that they wanted to do for a while. But um, I think it's a funny movie. I think it's kind of stands up there with the other two movies pretty well and where it makes a pretty fun little trilogy <laughs> that spans 31 years. Alex Winters and Keanu Reeves, of course, are the best parts of the movie. Uh, there are um, some aspects or some fun bits of nostalgia they kind of play with in this movie, like seeing William Sadler return his death is a lot, a lot of is a lot of fun. I do think the movie does kind of hurt itself, and in, in its similarity to the other movies, but it also needs to be similar to the other movies because if it was completely different, the movie wouldn't work. But the movie does work pretty well for the most part. I think it's a fun movie. I think it's worth watching. <laughs> um, uh, one thing that did bug me, I know it's kind of like the thing with the other movies, but the special effects in this movie, and I know the budget wasn't very big, but the special effects are all, I can't, it, they look intentionally just awful. <laughs> um, and I, I mean more along the way of CGI and everything. The practical effects are fine, the makeup's fine and everything, but the CGI and everything is noticeably bad, which kind of takes you out of it. I mean, it was bad in the originals, but that was also 30 years ago, and I know that they're trying to recreate that feeling, but that seeing how bad that did look does take me out of it a bit. But overall, it's a fun movie. I think it's a fun way to cap off that trilogy. I know it's a movie that's been kind of in the making for a long time. And I think it was worth making. I think it's a good movie for the most part. But I'll be rating Bill and Ted Face the Music a 7.5 out of 10. I think that as far as a regular comedy goes, as it, it might have rated it lower but the nostalgia factor that plays into watching it does kind of win you over and it's just fun but those are the four movies and then the one television season that i wanted to go over was the boys season two now the boys season two of course is a continuation of the first season and it's a superhero television show but it's not like the other ones the superheroes are for lack of a better word assholes and terrible people and then of course you have the people who are fighting against the heroes but there's a, there's a lot to go over with this season but i'm just gonna sum up some points i thought that a lot of the social commentary was pretty spot on. I thought it was pretty hilarious um, <laughs> what it had going on. Um, the Deep gets involved with basically Scientology, which I thought was hilarious. I think the show is hysterical a lot of the times. 
but it also does a good job of holding emotional weight and having you actually care for the characters in the show, which is a really good balance. The highlight, I think, of the show and this season especially is the villains. The villains, especially with Homelander, Anthony Starr's depiction of Homelander, and then of course Aya Cash's depiction of Stormfront are really, really entertaining. There's something about having these nearly impossible to kill superheroes be so intentionally evil that makes this show incredibly compelling because you have regular humans who are the ones who want to kill them and want to hunt them down and they're pretty much right to want to kill them because these are god awful people um literal nazis in some ways but anthony Starr and aya cash especially do an amazing job uh of playing very very intimidating characters and believable evil superman <laughs> superman especially and then of course carl urban is definitely a highlight of the show he's a lot of fun as billy butcher uh, there's something about him. He has a great screen presence in the show. But the season overall, I think that it had some very strong plot lines. I, I think its biggest problem is that kind of towards the middle, it does get caught up in some of the plot lines being extended a little too much where it makes it feel a little redundant and slows down the pacing quite a bit of the season in comparison to the beginning and the end of the season. But the season finale, especially, is easily the best episode of the show. I think that that's what kind of made the season as good as it was. It had some great emotional payoff. It had some holy shit moments and all this other stuff that happens in it, but I think The Boys Season 2 was a great continuation of the first season. It might, it doesn't feel quite as fresh as the first season, but they're doing some very, very interesting stuff with the show that I am excited to see what comes next. But I'll be rating The Boys Season 2 a 9.0 out of 10. Now, <laughs> this video ran a little bit longer than I thought it would. Of course, uncut, it's longer but those were five reviews kind of mashed together not going in quite in, as in depth as i'd like to with these movies and this tv show but i hope that that kind of gets out there but i want to know what you guys thought of my opinions on these things or whatever share your thoughts down below and i will be back with another video within four months this time.